We got to take care of some serious stuff here. Um, our brother, uh, Cliff Albright from Black Voters Matter. He's a friend of the show. He's been he's he's on the front line of this. He's if there's someone getting arrested for voting rights, it's the organization. They are part of Black Voters Matter all around the country. Their bus has been seen pushing the movement to make sure black votes are protected in this country. Brother Cliff Albright, um, I know we have some serious stuff to take care of. But uh, and please forgive us for bringing you in also during the shenanigans. How are you this morning? brother? <laughs> It's all right, man. You know, that nowadays we, we need some shenanigans every now and then. Exactly. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. because you know what? What's what's funny is, um, um, you know, my mother watches the show every now and then. And she said she texted me and she said, you guys are doing a whole lot of laughing. Uh, she was like, but this it's not really a whole lot to laugh about right now. Um, and I was like, you're right. And that's exactly why. We're going to laugh in the face of the absurdity. Let's talk about the absurdity. Yeah. The one that happened last night, but it's been an ongoing process, right? We did not just get here to the place where voting rights in this country is on the ledge. It's on the precipice. And we're really already, I think we're already in the deep end. And it's, it feels to me, and you help me understand this a little better. We have a, plenty of evidence. It feels to me that we're not getting the appropriate response from the people who have the power who could do something about the affront on our voting rights. Yeah, I mean, you know, it's, it's, it's sure felt that way over the past year, right? You know, we, we spent a lot of the past year trying to get, like you said, the folks that we, we gave power to, you know, and that, that includes the White House, includes Democrats in, in Congress, particularly in the Senate. You know, we spent a lot of time just trying to get them to be more aggressive, right? To, to deal with this as the existential crisis that it is. And, and so, you know, I think a lot of time was wasted there. Um, but then the last month we had this big flurry starting towards the end of, of, of December when they finally decided to shift from Build Back Better to focus on voting rights. Um, right. And then you start to see more more of the moderate, the more the so-called moderate Democrats starting to come out. Some of whom, you know, actually surprised me last night. I thought Angus King, who had been on the fence about uh about the filibuster um was was one of the strongest voices actually yeah. last night so some of them started to come out a few weeks ago um so we could have been further along right if they had started on this throughout the year if the white house if biden had made a speech sooner if you know yeah. if the senate had done more stuff um sooner but be it as it may you know we got to where we got last night which was a critical night and i want to be clear um, you know, everything that we've done, like you said, all the arrests, being in the streets, everything that we've done, uh, while we didn't get passage, I think it is worth noting, and this isn't just a moral victory or whatever, that debate last night was was significant. We had not yet even been able to have a debate on these bills, and we would not have had a debate on these bills if months ago we had decided, well, it's not going to happen, we're going to ease up, and we're just going to let them go through the process. It was activism that led, just like activism led to Biden giving a speech that he gave in Georgia, it was activism that led the Senate and, and Speaker Schumer, I mean, not Speaker, the Senate Majority Leader Schumer, to mm -hmm. push it this far and to get these mm -hmm. people on record. That means something. Mm. I often think about that. Um, it reminds me of when um, when Joe Biden uh, gave his acceptance speech the night um, that he finally accepted victory. It was a Saturday. It wasn't that Thursday. It wasn't the Tuesday night of the election. At that speech, he actually said in the record of his speech that uh, white supremacy is a uh, I believe he said existential threat to the United States of America. Now, um, I do feel the angst that most people are feeling this morning because, as you said, it's not a moral victory, but it is something to have it on the record, to have it on the mm -hmm. record of this country, particularly in the like Joe Biden's was just a speech. But on the Senate debate, that means it's going down on the record. Who's on the side of justice? Help the people to understand the significance of what happened last night. Yeah, I mean, and yeah, I mean, that means something to put people on the record, you know, that they actually voted against uh, voting rights, you know, because when they block, we all know, you know, over the, over the past few months that they've blocked uh, uh, even debating this, this voting rights legislation um, three times. Right. We all know that, you know, it makes it into the news cycle. Uh, but it, it gets lost right in the historical record. Right. Most people aren't going to 20, 30 years from now may not remember that they voted to filibuster having a debate on these bills over the past few months. 
but they will remember that this debate and this vote took place and that means something getting mansion and cinema on the record means something right having having even that exchange you know the exchange that took place between Ossoff, who who I've been critical of every now and then. Um, right. But that debate between Senator Ossoff and and um, Susan Collins, right? When she tried to she tried to clap back, but she but she missed the mark. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, She didn't know she didn't know what she was talking about, right? That's right. And so Ossoff right. called her out. And in fact, what I would even like to see is since she was so adamant talking about, ooh, you know, I supported the five page. Um, um, you know, extension of the Voting Rights Act, they might want to, you know, there's some talk about them breaking these these pieces down. They might want to bring that back up. Okay, well, okay, let's let's do another five pager where we where we not just extend but we restore. You could do that in five pages. In fact, truth be told, the 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 version that they had filibustered of the John Lewis Voting Rights Advancement Act uh, probably wasn't much more than that, right? But since yeah, you now yeah. are on the record saying that's what you supported, then let's go, okay, game on, let's do it, right? And right, so having right. that debate and, and getting them on record, you know, means something. Yeah, yeah. Brother Mac, I want to get you in there. Uh, before we do, real quick, I, uh, DJ Exclusive, thank you for reminding me. Um, our sister, Rebecca Azor, is actually currently on The Hill Rising, um, and she's over there representing for the morning show, and she'll be joining us momentarily. I know she wanted to get in on some of this conversation about voting rights, but Brother Mac, let me yield the floor to you. And, and Brother Albright, uh, you know, on behalf of a grateful people, thank you so much. And, and I know that, you know, Sister Latasha Brown, uh, her and I roll deep. And so I just want to thank you all for what you're doing. But many times when I talk to members in our community, they find this whole thing so complex and, and convoluted. So I just want you to and I certainly don't mean to be insulting to anybody, but let's just try to be as elementary as, as, as we can to let folks understand simplistically what's going on. So can you tell us what is the current makeup of the Senate, both Republican and Democrat? How many votes did we need in order to pass this Voting Rights Act? And, uh, and, and, and then how does the filibuster play into all of this and, and how uh, Manchin and Cinema are, are such a roadblock to it? So, so those very basic fundamental questions, if, if you could just lay that out for us sort of all of us can have just a very simple understanding of, of how important what, what happened last night was. Right. Um, yeah, no problem. So, you know, the makeup of the Senate, the first part of your question, the makeup of the Senate is this, that there's 50 Democrats, and, 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 and some of these terms don't really, because <laughs> you, yeah. you got some Democrats yeah. that ain't really, you know, they, right. they, they not standing for the things that we would think that they Democrats stand in for. name only. Democrats and Democrats and name only. Right. And, and truth be told, it's really only 48 because two of two of those 50 aren't even technically Democrats. You got a couple of independents, but that's a whole nother right. story. Um, but you got 50 Democrats uh, and then you've got 50 Republicans. Right. So what does that mean in a majority rule system? Well, it, it, it generally means uh, and most of us think what that means is that if they vote on something and if there's a tie, then what's the tiebreaker? The tiebreaker is that the vice president of the United States, whose who's sister Kamala, vice president Kamala Harris, um, would cast the deciding vote, right? And certainly there have been a couple of things, uh, a couple of pieces of legislation where that has already happened. But the problem is to get to that 50, and this is the part that a lot of us don't understand and, and people in other countries don't understand it, to make something happen in the Senate, you've often got to, you've often got to get 60 votes because of this thing that they call the filibuster. filibuster. And so um, that's the problem to, to even to even have a debate on certain things. You, you don't just have simple majority rule. Right. You've got to get 60 votes. And in this current makeup, there are not 10 Republicans that will vote for anything, pretty much, especially not voting rights, right? You couldn't find 10 Republicans to to even uh, a vote on whether or not they would have a 
uh, investigation yeah. into what happened on January 6th, right? That's so right. If, the, if you can't find 10 people to investigate an attack on their workspace, <laughs> right. then you're yeah, not going to get 10 of them to, to, um, to look into or support voting rights. So that's the that's the makeup that we're at, where we've got 50, but 50 is not enough because you got to get 60 in order to get past this, this procedural obstacle and this, this thing called the filibuster, which historically, and, and, and a couple of people pointed this out last night during the debate, historically, it has been used more to block civil rights legislation than it has been used on any other single issue. And that mm. history goes back to the 1800s, now right, into the, the Civil Rights Acts of the, of the 1870s. It might oh, as wow. well, the filibuster might as well have a big Negroes only sign above it, mm. just like the water fountains, because that's the wow. way it has historically been used. Has it been used on other stuff? Yeah, but never on any other single issue as much as it's used on, on civil rights legislation. And, and, wow. and so, my brother, and, and thank you so much. But, but again, as you stated, Around the world, people are confused about the 60. So are we saying that in order for the Voting Rights Act to come up, to come up for vote on the floor, and thus you can get a 50-50 vote, and then yeah. the vice president cast the majority vote, are you saying that for it to even come up on the floor, you got to have 60 people to say, yes, let's bring it up for debate, or, or let's mm. bring it up for a vote? Is it That's that simple? That's the part. It's it's It's... It's pretty much that simple. The, the reason it's a, it's a little bit more complex is only because last night there was a debate, but they had to use this, this strange process that I won't even go into. It's called messages between the houses. They had to come up with this with this strange procedural process just so that they could get to the point that they were at last night, which is which was a debate. So but generally so that was a special situation. But generally, what you just said is correct. You have to have 60 votes just to not just to pass the bills, to even discuss the bills, right. which which, you know, in an in a institution that calls itself the world's most deliberative body, you have to have 60 percent or 60 votes just to even deliberate. And they blocked that. And the way that they blocked that isn't even the way that they used to do it, where you'd have to you'd have to stand up and argue your case on on why you're blocking it. The way that they do it now with this 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 kind of secret filibuster or a pocket filibuster, right. you could be on a plane somewhere flying home saying, I'm a filibuster that voting rights thing. And, the and, and so there's there's. <laughs> There's, there's no process. There's, there's no there's no uh, transparency. There's no accountability. There's no no open discussion. All you got to do is say, I'm a filibuster. It. You don't have wow. 60 votes. And then it just gets yeah. squashed without any kind of any kind of debate or, or discussion. And, and, I want to so bring in. Uh, once, you could, back, me, real, okay. I just want to bring in sister. Uh, well, she's on the screen. She brought herself in. <laughs> Good morning, Rebecca. <laughs> and you morning. muted. Though, You're sis. on mute, sis. You're on mute, sis. It is still a pandemic. See, every time we got guests in the room, y'all want to act like it's crazy. <laughs> you know, y'all better be glad that Cliff is a cousin. So, you know, he's family. He already know what's up. But good morning, I know. beautiful black good, good man. Good morning. <laughs> Rebecca, Rebecca is actually not late this morning. Rebecca was just over at the Hill Rising, um, and we could talk about that as you know, as you see fit, Re Rebecca. Uh, but I just have to point out the fact of what Dwayne, um, Dwayne, you're going to have to say that again for me, brother. What did you just say? I said I bet you wasn't muted on Rising. <laughs> <laughs> I bet you she was on time for right. Anyway, listen, I listen, digress. Listen, 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 listen. Don't do that. Don't do that. Because you know, see, this is this is my show. You know, I don't know if you know everybody knows on this show right now, but this is my show. I come in when I need to be here. Okay. Let me show. Let me show. Let me show. I can link to your own show. Tell them, sis. Let me tell you, all the Cliff. houses. You know how it is. You got to make sure you're together. And because I am the only black woman that was in that segment, you got to mm. let them know mm. what's up. I'm not gonna go over there looking crazy and i would never respect disrespect my show but i know when i'm not here i got all of you guys to hold it down for me but when you pulling up to something new and they all you know clear and they all <laughs> are men and i'm pulling up as a black woman the first thing they said was wow beautiful nails wow that's so really cool. come wow. on oh wow rebecca really 
Okay, we we gonna have to unpack that in a minute. But yeah, we, got, like, we are. Does in videos. <laughs> it was fun though. It was fun. Uh, that, that we wanna uh, and Cliff, you let us know how much time you have because our producer said that you can hang. I, I don't I don't know if that's still the case this morning, but we got a lot of video evidence to what um for everything that you're saying. Um, and I wanted to just before we move, brother Mac, I want to get you back in there. And and the first clip I want us to see is the one of your co-founder Latasha Brown, um, where she is speaking very clearly uh, about the stakes here. Um, but before we go to that clip brother mac you were getting in there yeah yeah and so, and so brother all right again even and, and so part of the the, the the criticism that the democrats and in particular the biden administration is, is having is that not within their own party can they come to a consensus and so there are two senators mansion and cinema who are holding out and so can you speak to us about what it is why it is that they can't get on board with the idea of passing a Voting Rights Act in which they understand that this country is attempting to suppress the minority, in particular the black mm. vote. So what is it about Manchin and Cinema's position that appears to be such a headache for not only the administration, uh, but the Democratic Party, and in particular, getting this Voting Rights Act passed? Yeah, you know, that's a hard one to answer because, you know, there's 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 no sanity to either one of their positions. You know, with 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 Manchin, you know, it's it's this this uh you know, at least on the face of it, this thing he has for maintaining the Senate and and, we, and really both of them talk about, you know, if we do this, if we get rid of the filibuster, then that'll open up the door for for Mitch McConnell and the Republicans to come in and, and do the same thing. And, and but in saying that what they don't what they fail to realize is He's already done that. <laughs> you know, Mitch McConnell has already demonstrated <laughs> right. that he'll blow up the filibuster. Guess what? That's how Trump got three Supreme Court justices. That's and exactly so there's no, right. There's, hmm. there's, there's no reason to think that by, by them being reasonable, that they're somehow going to be saving the institution of the Senate. So that's part of the, the contradiction and, and the hypocrisy. You know, with, with Manchin, there's also this whole thing that he has about, oh, we've never done this. And we've always had the filibuster like that. It's a lie. It's just a, I, I can't even say that he's that he's just inaccurate. He's really just lying because he knows that's better. Right. right. He that's knows right. that this filibuster has not always existed. He knows that it's not in the Constitution. He knows that. Uh, it's it's been uh, modified literally over a hundred times, 160 times, just within the past 40 or 50 years. He knows all of this, but he's telling these lies as if this is so sacrosanct, as if, as if we're supposed to sacrifice. Um, I said this the other day uh, on Martin Luther King Day, as if we're supposed to sacrifice our voting rights on the, the altar and the golden calf of the filibuster. <laughs> we're not doing that, you know. And so, um, so it's hard to. And with cinema, she is so isolated even from her from her own constituents in Arizona who who shout out to Arizona they have been clowning out there in terms of putting pressure on her but she doesn't she hasn't even had a town hall in four years that she's that she's wow. been in office right so she doesn't even talk to her own people in Arizona you can't blame it on the people of Arizona or on the state being so uh, conservative because guess what her colleague uh, um, um, who's up for election this year, also from Arizona, he came out in support of modifying the filibuster in support of voting rights. And so their positions make no sense other than they got some people uh, lying in their pockets, you know, because that's we right. know that they have both been raising funds off of this. But even that's a little confusing because, like, I get it on the Build Back Better thing. Like, they got pharma, big pharma, they got energy yep. interests that are that are funding them because there's 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 financial stakes in terms of build back better, right? You can see the alignment in terms of why their donors are, are leading them to fight against build back better. It's a little bit less clear on, on voting rights, right? Which which isn't fundamentally an economic issue, although part of one of the, the acts that was merged, the Freedom to Vote Act, does include some campaign finance reform pieces to it, which mm. is part of the reason why places like the, the, okay. the U.S. Chamber of Commerce and some other donors and business interests do have an interest. So it's, it's not just the concept of democracy. It's also about um, the, the, the impact of mm. big money and money dark and money politics. in this wow. democracy. And mm. that might be the reason why their donors are having them to take these these idiotic, insane positions that they're taking on, yeah. on voting rights. And, and, and Queen, can I ask just one last question? I'm so sorry, but if I could just ask one last question. Mm. 
So, so Brother Albright, thank you so much for clear. I mean, it is your insight is, is impeccable. And so yeah. here's the other thing, my last question. With the Voting Rights Act, I know a lot of times these bills won't come up because they have these sub bills as a part of them. Is the Voting Rights Act a standalone bill where that's all that's in there that should cause basically you saying if you vote against this, you are absolutely voting for voter suppression. So are there other underlying sub bills a part of it or is it standalone? No, this is standalone. This is just voting rights. Now, it, it includes, you know, because you got the voter access parts of voting rights, you know, making Election Day a national holiday, having guaranteed yeah. number of early vote days, all that stuff. You've, you've got that that dark money, you know, campaign finance, which which they try to argue makes this be a, like a dirty bill, kind of like what you're saying. Right. But all of that is a part of voting rights. Gerrymandering is in the Freedom that's Vote right. Act, but that's a part mm-hmm. of voting rights. If we're not clear mm-hmm. about that, just 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 look at places like like, uh, in fact, in, in Florida, where like unheard of. Governor Def Santis mm. just tried to uh, introduce his own maps. He's not even in the legislature, but he's trying to introduce some maps. And what do those maps do? They literally cut uh, black representation, black and brown representation in half. Okay. Same thing that they did in Texas. Wow. Same thing that they're doing in a whole bunch of other states. So gerrymandering is a, is a voting rights issue and it's That's a right. racial justice issue. So Here all of everything in these acts deals with voter suppression. It is a clean voting rights, uh, voter suppression, extending the Voting Rights Act uh, of, of 1965, extending and, and, and re-strengthening um, the Voting Rights Act to, to put back in what the Supreme Court took away. So this is, ain't no pork belly or whatever, all that, you know, ain't none, ain't none of that stuff up in That's these right. bills. This is all about our voting rights and representation. Wow. And, and um, that's exactly what I was going to get to, you know, a lot of these conversations are centered around, you know, yes, you know, the filibuster, it's, it's, it's taking away voting rights, it's the, but who exactly, okay? When we're going to talk about this, we need to talk about who exactly it is affecting and why it's sure. so important that it affects the black vote. You know, this is what we got to mm-hmm. talk about. What communities are, are um, is it disrupting, you know, and right. why is it that, you know, all these little things that are being done affects the black community the most? And I think that's where people want to start, you know, wavering when it comes to that conversation, the bipartisan view on it. People who are saying mm-hmm. that they're, they are for yeah. voting rights, but they don't want to talk about that part of it. That's a huge part of it. And I think... When we look at people like Kirsten Cinema and everyone else who are saying that they're for the people and for, for vo- voting rights, when you when you are behind these kind of things, this is telling me that this is drenched in something that is racial mm. racially uh, uh, charged, yep. and it lets me know that just because you know you're on the right side of things or the left side of things doesn't mean that you know you're on you're for the people that you're supposed to be protecting the, that's right. the people that you're supposed to be leading yeah. so i think that's a part of the conversation that a lot of democrats don't want to really tap into is the fact that this is a, a racially charged situation this is affecting voting rights but the people it's affecting the most look like everybody on the screen that's right mm. i mean yeah i mean no, you you exactly right, Rebecca. You see, that's 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 why it's Rebecca's show. You see, you're exactly <laughs> right, Rebecca, because um, you know, and, and some, even last night, some of the Democrats didn't touch on that right. racial that racial piece of it, right? But some of them did, you know. Uh, um, like I said, some of them pointed out the the racial history of the filibuster. Others pointed out the the racial impact of of this of the, these attacks. You know, we got to keep in mind, even when we talk about the, trying to overturn the election in January 6th, what exactly were they trying to overturn, right? <laughs> they were trying to overturn specific states. That's what that's, that's what right. that was about. And what were those states? It was places like Georgia because they felt like the vote in Atlanta wasn't legitimate. It was places like Michigan because they felt like the vote in Detroit wasn't legitimate. It was places like Pennsylvania because they thought that the votes from from folks in Philadelphia Mm. weren't legitimate. Are we seeing the pattern here? So really what Mm. they were trying to do was to overturn (laughs) black votes. But what it led to was an insurrection that was attacking the entire democratic process. And that's the part. and, And Reverend Barber has been, you know, really trying to make sure that people understand this. It's a racial, it is a race issue. All of it going back even to the 65 act was about racism and about 
uh, disenfranch disenfranchising black folks. And it's the same today, but what it creates is a system where your entire democracy is at stake. And so mm. what do you find? You find an entire election being overthrown. You see attacks on, on like in Florida, where they're attacking vote by mail. Up until last year, it was Republicans that used to win by vote by mail. And so, huh. but then we came out in big numbers. And That's so now they're trying problem. to get rid of a, a of a mechanism that everybody created for themselves. From. I use, That's right. I use Mississippi as an example. Mississippi, a lot of people don't know this, just, just last year or, or year before last year, voted by popular vote for medical marijuana in Mississippi, right? I did not know um, that. Michael Bell. But the, hey, but the Republicans. <laughs> I know you like that, man. But the Republicans, <laughs> <laughs> the Republicans were so bad about it that what did they do? They challenged, check this out, they challenged their entire ballot initiative process. So that, the, and then the court threw away the entire process. So now the state of Mississippi has no process for popular ballot initiative. That's wow. the extent that, so that's an attack on the entire democracy in that state that's, that's directly structural. aimed at. It's, wow. it's structural. So all of the stuff that they targeted black folks, and we got to be real clear, it is rooted in Jim Crow, racism, white supremacy. Mm. We are targets. They target us with surgical precision. They target precision. us in, mm. in, in mm. North and South Dakota. They targeted our, our indigenous brothers and sisters. I want to leave them out, right? In Texas, yes. they targeted our, our Latinx brothers and sisters, right? Yes. It's rooted in racism, but mm. all of them are going to suffer when they let this this what's what this so-called democracy because it ain't never been perfect in fact what we're seeing today is really just a reflection of the original sin the Hello. original creeks in this and the original cracks in this democracy ain't never go away and so what mm. we're seeing today is just a reflection of that you only wanted to let white men with money <laughs> you mm. know men money Land. and property that you only wanted them to vote and, and so we saw a senate last night which still, with some minor changes, right, but still reflects that same population, white men, Christian with money, right? And so it's the, it's the original sin and the original uh, fault lines in this democracy rooted in racism that is still reflecting itself today. We can't lose sight of that. But be clear, this entire democracy will crumble just like just like you are not exempt from COVID, even though mm -hmm. a lot of the response was rooted in racism because they said, mm -hmm. oh, it's, it's, it's disproportionately hurting black folks. This ain't yeah. a problem. Right. Yeah. But then what do you do? You mess around and then you create a situation where it's affecting red states and, 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 and white communities that they thought were somehow going to be exempt. So everything that they target at us winds up affecting every structure. Your racism in education has made your entire education system weak. Your racism in employment has made your entire employment and wages and income situation weak. Your, your racism in healthcare has made your entire health system. It's the 1619 project, right? Everything that you targeted mm. us is mm. going to impact this entire system. And that's what we're seeing with the so-called democracy. It's rooted in racism and white supremacy. Yes, it is. So, so Brother Albright, it, would you say that, <sighs> you know, in recent elections, arguably, uh, well, not arguably, but factually speaking, the highest voter turnout was 2008 with the election of, of President Obama. And so ultimately now we get a, you know, we get the sacred position of having a man of color in the Oval Office. Huh. Do you think that that was, and, and I know that historically it's been going on, but do you think that the efforts right, around bro, voter suppression really ramped up when they saw that one incident? And again, I think likewise in the last election when George when Georgia flipped, if you could comment to, to, to both of those. No, definitely. I mean, even as you know, a lot of people have been pointing out that these 16 Republicans that voted for the Voting Rights Act in 2006 but now they don't believe in, in voting rights. Well, what, what could have changed? What happened soon after 2006 <laughs> that could have made them all of a sudden be like, oh, this voting thing, I don't, ooh, I don't what, you know. Let I me, can, want I, to can I, can I, please, <laughs> can, I, can, I, can I do something real quick? As a point of privilege for the show, hey, Google, what happened today in black history? On January 20th, 2009, Barack Hussein Obama II was sworn in as the 44th president of the United States. After graduating from Columbia University, he went on to Harvard Law School, where he became the first black president of the Harvard Law Review. 
Before entering politics, Obama was mentored by Michelle Robinson at the law firm Sidley Austin. The two would later marry. Obama worked as a civil rights attorney and also taught constitutional law at the University of Chicago Law School. He sought the presidency after serving as both an Illinois state senator and a United States senator. Adapted from Black Heritage Day 4 calendar by author, lecturer, and civil rights activist Dr. Carl Mack. <clears throat> I love mm. it when a plan comes Come together. Come on, Dr. Carl uh, Mack. Dr. Carl Mack. Come on, Dr. Carl Mack. You know what Dr. Carl Mack. did come together. It was very good. I was like, did y'all rehearse this? Because it was too It was too on point. It was okay? smooth. It was, it was, it was perfect. We had it was, it was impromptu as hell. I said, excuse me. Okay? It was... <laughs> hey, no, true, full transparency, Dr. Mack set that up. He gave me the alley-oop, and, and I, I saw it. I that saw was it. Good. And I just, that uh, was good. It was good. great. It was great. It was great. I love it with a plan. But now, dovetailing back to the conversation, Conversation because we're professional here. Is that not That's when first. these fools lost their damn minds? Hmm. That is exactly. In fact, we can take it even further, right? Because hmm. what then happened? Because that's where the Tea Party came from, right? Uh, and that's there's right. a direct line from from the Tea Party to to the insurrectionists. Be clear about that. Um, but but it's not just that. It's even enshrined in the Supreme Court Shelby decision, which weakened the Voting Rights Act. Because hmm. as Chief Justice Roberts would say. You know, where he made the argument, we need to be clear, Justice Roberts has been trying to get rid of the Voting Rights Act ever since the, the early 80s when Lonnie Guinier kicked his butt and, 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 got, the, and got the voting rights. It was, it was part of the team that got the Voting Rights Act extended Jeez. then in a way that he didn't want to see it happen. So he's this has been a long vendetta that he's had against mm. voting rights. But okay. in, in the Shelby decision, part of what Roberts basically says is, you know, we clearly we don't still need all these provisions because guess what you know we got a black president right mm. that was 2013 and so mm -hmm. in more ways than one mm. the election of barack obama president obama like you said made them lose their minds made them no longer want to support voting rights to whatever extent they ever supported voting rights uh, uh, became part of the Supreme Court's decision, which then in turn is part of what has opened up the floodgates to you know, voter ID and everything else that we've seen over the past eight years. And, and then they made it worse last year with the with the Brownovich Supreme Court decision, which further weakened the, the Voting Rights Act. So hey, all of this brother, has its man. roots. You, 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 you as an informed just, behind... I feel like the scene from Harlem Nights, man. Like, quick, you was a smooth. You got these facts. <laughs> like, you, you, and it's important though. Here's why it's important because if we don't understand the precise machinations of the games they're playing up there, we don't stand a chance in fighting back against it. That's right. No, you, you no, ahead. that's exactly right. Yeah. Yeah, I, I think, um, you know. As Ben said, I mean, you're very informed, but specifically when it comes to voting rights, this is the thing. There are a lot of people who look like us who don't understand their rights when it comes to voting. They don't know yeah, what it looks true. like when their rights are being taken from them. So, yeah, you know, mm -hmm. having you, uh, you know, break it down to us, it's simple things like, um, you know, uh, um, address changes or where your address is located. Yeah, you know, right. they'll try to step in and, and, t and say that your vote isn't going to count because this is where you're located or whatever the case may be. So this is why it's very important for us to be educated or, or know what our local officials, you know, state officials are doing when it comes to voting rights. That's because right. you may not know that they are low-key planning and doing things to make sure that when it comes time to vote, your your vote will not count. They're going to make sure that right. they put things in place to make sure that your vote doesn't count. So thank you so much, Cliff. All right. Thank you so mm. much for educating yeah. us on this. Yes. And it's not only that that it's not only, if I might add, that, um, um, you know, former President Barack Obama, him just being elected president, okay? It wasn't only that. It was when he wore that tan suit. <laughs> then people lost <laughs> all of the little hairs they, they had. Everything. Oh, they had. <laughs> And they they, they know like, how to uh, respond. <laughs> they, they, why would we it, this? They were literally using that and saying it, the fact that he is so disrespectful enough to wear a tan suit lets us know that our voting rights don't matter. Mm. They were just, using this mm. as rhetoric. Just mm -hmm. to pose that to to the, the the moron that just left office. I'm sorry. Go ahead, brother Cliff. <laughs> and and yeah. the Queen, oh, no, you, you you hit on a point that I also, brother Albright, if you could please, just in his very simplistic. Uh, explanation described to us because Queen, you said they do these things. So, Brother Albright, just tell us some of the things that they're, you know, they're looking at doing. Yes, sir. Yes. Whatever those simple things are, mm -hmm. that that these tricks that we should be on the lookout for. That's tricks. 
Yeah, oh god, how much how much time do we have left for this show? So <laughs> okay, I mean, eleven you know, minutes, we'll take it, run it. <laughs> so you know, so Rebecca mentioned a couple of them, right? It's things like um, closing polling places, moving polling places, uh, uh, the photo ID restrictions, both for use in person as well as use of, of of ID for vote by mail. Sometimes even combining ID with these other requirements of you got to have a notary, you got to have two signatures, okay. like all of these things what? that they know people don't readily have available. It's the voter purges. That's a that's a huge thing, right? Mm -hmm. That how all these states un under the guise of saying, oh, we're just maintaining the 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 list and making sure that the list is ac accurate, but they wind up purging folks um, who who should not be purge and guess what it's always disproportionately black folks right mm -hmm. um it's it's things even like i was talking about our, our indigenous brothers and sisters you know it's the address requirements where for mm -hmm. folks that that live in, in indigenous communities where they know that they don't have the traditional uh, mailing systems and that's so right. that's something that they use to get rid of their communities oh, wow. right wow. Um, wow. um it's 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 um you know we talked about the clothes it's drop boxes right we're mm -hmm. we're in a lawsuit against florida right now where they are saying that, well, we're going to have drop boxes, but guess what? We're going to change it from the way that we did it last year, which which even the crazy man DeSantis said was the gold yeah. standards. We didn't have any problems with our election, but then they come out with their voter suppression bill, where part of what they're doing is saying that we're going to have um, drop boxes being monitored, right, by, by workers, by employees. Well, what does that mean? Does that mean sheriff deputies? Does that mean, mm. you know, these election officials that a lot of times, sometimes are viewed as, as hostile folks are sometimes part of the reason our folks use drop boxes is because we don't want to have to walk into the courthouse or, or wherever and cast that vote because we know that people are watching but now you're going to have even the drop boxes being monitored and oh by the way you can only use them during certain hours which defeats the purpose mm -hmm. of of, of drop having box. a drop box right? right if i could get there from nine to five then i probably wouldn't even need to drop box That's right. and so right but you got these <laughs> You got these restrictions on drop. In fact, in Georgia, which already passed its voter suppression bill last year, now they're introducing a new bill. That's that's how long we've been in this fight. We're going through a second wave of, of voter suppression in these states. And part of what they're doing after they restricted drop boxes last year, restricted the number and the locations and the hours. This year, they said, you know what? That wasn't enough. Let's just get rid of the drop boxes altogether. That's what they're mm. trying to do here in Georgia. It's provisions that include things like, you know, there's a lot that's made out of the line warming, you know, not being able to give out food and water, which which is, is ridiculous. Like, so you're going to impose a exactly. system which creates right. five hour, six hour, seven hour lines in our communities, not everywhere, but in our communities. And then okay. when we try to support people to make it easier for them to stay online, you're going to criminalize giving out food and water. That's a feature that is in many of these bills. And then one of the biggest features that's in these bills is the whole thing, you know, that's related to election subversion. All of these things that are related to the, the local boards of elections in Georgia that that the, the the they took power away from the Secretary of State, gave it to the Republican legislature so that they can take over a local board of election, which they are now trying to do in Fulton County. You don't have to take over every county board. If you just take over Fulton County, guess what? What what Trump asked the Secretary of State to do, which was go find me eleven thousand votes, <clears throat> this would yeah. give them the power to do that, right? Right. And so we're oh, seeing man. that feature in some of these bills in several states. And how states, black is including... Fulton County, y'all? Everybody from Fulton, everybody who ever even been through Fulton County know that Fulton County is the blackest part of Atlanta, That's Georgia. Right. So they know exactly who. I don't what know about and that, you, brother. You, man. South, well, well, it's South Fulton. It's South Fulton. The city of South Fulton is the blackest city in America. Yes, right. Mm -hmm. But in terms of targeting right. on the, the vote, when they they target it with precision, they targeted Fulton right. County as a whole so that they can get the votes that they need, and they knew if they can scale on Fulton County because of how black it is, they can overcome that hurdle of how much Donald Trump lost by in the last election. Yes, and, and speaking of that, Brother Albright, speaking of that, based mm -hmm. on what you all have done, did you see any proof of the allegations that Trump made about votes not being counted, votes coming up, all of the lies, the, the big lie? Did you all see lie any evidence, any proof of that? Because again, I've always stated that if there is 
a an absolute undeniable flaw in the system. I clearly understand the need to change to make that process more with with further integrity. So did you see a lack of integrity that mm. that uh, that coincided or agreed with, quote unquote, the big lie? Let me tell you this. The only evidence I've seen of the fraud that they were talking about with the big lie is the evidence that we have repeatedly. The only folks that have been found doing any kind of fraud have been what have been Trump voters. In fact, That's that right. fool, the lieutenant governor in Texas, would as That's far right. as the, <laughs> the issue of a bounty, the offer of reward, if they could go out and find all this rampant voter fraud in Pennsylvania. And the only thing they found in Pennsylvania was two people, two Trump voters that tried to vote, that tried to vote <laughs> <laughs> multiple times. And so, oh, wow. you know, no, this fraud doesn't, it doesn't exist. Um, and there's no, and, and that's not just me talking. We, we all know yeah. that they had dozens, dozens of cases that <laughs> frivolous cases that they tried to file and they weren't able to win. Not a single one. Not, not even not even a win. They were even in some cases able to get past summary judgment. And these some of these judges were Trump judges right. <laughs> that, right. that, that, that went inside <laughs> for him. So <laughs> it doesn't exist. It's nothing but a big lie. But what we know is that if you say the lie often That's enough and loud That's enough it. that people will believe it, especially when those people were predisposed to believe that there's something going on with these black folks that are wow. that are winning these these elections and coming out in such large mm. numbers. That's how you get to a point where you got what is it like 70, 70 percent of Republicans. I think the number is don't believe that Biden won the election. That's Crazy. a result of them mm. saying the big lie loud over and, and over often. Again. Combined and, and probably, with the already existing white supremacy in the people probably, that are believing the lie. We got about we have about four minutes before the end of the segment. We want to make sure anyone who is a patron, patreon.com forward slash like it or not, patreon.com forward slash the BPD show. We're going to take it to the after party where there's so much more about this that we're going to discuss. And we also have a there's a list of things to discuss. Our brother Matt getting there real quick. And um, as we get ready to get out of here, yeah, brother. All right. One of the things Ben and I were talking about is when they had this special investigation to take place to, to look at the, the voting in Arizona. Tell us what ultimately, you know, because supposedly they had an expert to come in and they were going to count the ballots and do all this stuff. And they had big money behind it. What was the end result of all of that? Well, the end result is the expert. And it wasn't an expert. It was some fly by night company, Cyber Ninjas. You put the fate of democracy in the hands of Cyber Ninjas. And so they came in and did this. Fraud <laughs> that's the name of them? Fraudulent. That's the name. That's the name of the company. No, that's that. No, that's real talk. Oh, that's the name the of the company. That, that oh, is wow. the name. That is yes. The name. Yes. No. I'm that's, you call them story. that's the name of the company. My <laughs> that's the real story. So <laughs> Frontline Cyber doctors. Ninjas. Oh my God! This yeah. is please finish telling it us. Is, this is you certain. see how ridiculous it is? Wow! It's the, yeah, no, that's how ridiculous it is. And so they come in and find nothing. They wasted all this time, wasted all this money, found nothing. In fact, the only thing. No, I'm sorry. They did find something. They actually found that Biden had more votes than what they <laughs> thought that, that it was reported. And so, but but not only that. Now, cyber ninjas is now being. I think they're being sued or investigated. That's right. Uh, 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 and so, but it's not just Arizona. They've done these fraud, these fraudulent audits, these frauds in several other states. Where again, even the Republican officials that um, asked for the audits have had to come back and say nothing was found. Nothing was found in in several states. That's happened. Arizona was the was the biggest mm -hmm. and the most ridiculous of them. Mm -hmm. But that's happened in several states. There has been no evidence found of any mm -hmm. fraud. No evidence found at the count. <coughs> um, no evidence wow. found that what um, uh, what Kanye West publicist tried to say <laughs> where she uh, where she harassed I know y'all know about that where she right. harassed you know, an election that. worker <laughs> yeah and so uh, uh, so yeah all of this is nothing but a big lie but it's a big lie that has implications because then you see that lie being supported in the United States Senate you saw it being supported let's not forget in addition to the, the insurrection on January 6th, that you had a hundred and what's the number, 147, 100 and something uh, Republicans that even after the insurrection still voted to overturn the election, including wow. six or so members of the of the Senate, the same Senate that was having this debate. So the big lie is in the in the U.S. Senate where they are voting and making policy or not making policy 
based on the big lie. You got people running for office, including in Arizona, but in other states, I think Trump has endorsed like 160 something folks. Some of them are running for governorships. Some of them are running for secretary of state and their platform is that they would not have over that they would not have certified the last the election. election. They are yeah. literally running on an insurrectionist platform. This oh, is right. not a joke. Yeah. And you know, but the right good right. news wow, is, wow, wow. You're in the good news is, we got the power. Look, we got and, and the and power. Speak on, and then speaking of the insurrection, think about what happened in the Supreme Court, that there was an eight to one vote to say no, turn over Trump's record. And there was right. one vote right. that said no. And do you clear to, do you, uh, you know, do you care to share with us who that one vote was? <laughs> <laughs> Y'all know who it is, Uncle Clarence. Mm, <laughs> Uncle Clarence. Mm. Oh, 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 oh my God! Oh. Listen, listen, Rebecca. Go ahead, Rebecca. This is my guy. Even that the up. three, <laughs> even the three people that <laughs> Trump appointed, Trump put on. In, including the stolen seat that Mitch McConnell yes. made happen because he stole a seat, um, but Rick even Rick they Rick voted Gorsuch. against. Yes. Right, even <laughs> they voted against. Trump, but Clarence Thomas yes. somehow mm. finds the, the 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 strength and wisdom to side with the with the twice impeached former occupant of the White House. Man, that mm. is ins- that's madness. That is madness. And, and, and so, brother well, Albright, so, I, I think uh, all of this clearly says to us, brother Mac, uh, brother Mac, I I I, I got to hold it there only because we we it. we're out of time. I know um, it's, it's getting good. It's, it's, like, it's so getting proud good. of you, bro. Thank you we, so much. Brother yes. uh, and, and brother Good Cliff, job. you do know if you don't hit the abort button, we will hold you here at least for another half hour because we're getting ready to go to the to the, uh, to the right. after party, Rebecca. And I know because I am not I'm not going to get on I'm not going to get in trouble on account of brother Mac. I don't know if Cliff uh, Rebecca, wants to see where are we the going in the show right now? Because you know Listen, this is your show, right? No, it is my show. This is my show. But I, I do right. love how you know how how this is a great conversation. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> We got, see, this is what I don't like. I don't like this. But we're going to get to the after our guest is gone. Thank you, Cliff Albright. I, we're going to have you again because, like I said, this conversation can go on for days and days and days. And we're all educated okay. on it. But this is, this, is, this is the conversation that we need to be having, especially now. Yeah. So be prepared for that phone call that email. Oh, yeah. Hey, whenever y'all call, I'm there for y'all. And, and just, oh, I want to say this real quick because I've been saying it all week and I'm going to still say it in spite of what happened last night. Let us not grow weary. For in due season we shall reap if we faint not. I don't care what happened last night. This battle is not over. This battle ain't over till we say it's over. Game on. That's Let's right. Go. Let's, Amen. Go. Let's go. Yes, sir. Hey, yes, sir. DJ exclusive. Take us out on that note. We'll see Thank everybody you, at the after party.